Thanks for being here on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. We'll now be talking about female genital mutilation. Uh, Saturday, February 6th, 2021, was a day uh, set aside to mark the you know, advocacy against female genital mutilation and all the horrors and scars that it causes young girls all over the world and especially here in Nigeria. And uh, today, still talking about this and expanding on our discussion from Friday, we have a journalist, Melanie Ishala, you know, to talk about this you know, based on her experience experiences and investigation producing a documentary on this very important issue. So take a listen. Till today, going to my late 40s is still a mystery to me. That I was actually circumcised. What is happening? The journey to finding my voice okay. began at Ibadan. It's usually talk of war if we want to come together. No! What, Faramo? Not you, enjoy it. No, Faramo, I say! Crying out loud, why would I look forward to it? Something that at every point in time, when it comes, I feel pain. A little into the conversation, the myths that surround the practice began to surface. They remove the clitoris, they remove the, the labia, and then they try to sew it up. You're welcome back. Uh, that was the trailer for the documentary, Don't Cut Her. Uh, we now have joining us, Melanie Ishala. Good morning. Good morning. Get your happy. Thank you for being here. Tell us about your experience, you know, with this very important issue and how it's motivated and inspired you to do a documentary on this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, I, I came across an NGO some two years ago while I was discharging my duties on radio. And it was female, uh, Zero Tolerance Day Against Female Genital Mutilation 2019. And uh, the women from the NGO did a great job of explaining what female genital mutilation was. And at the end of it, giving data they said that the local government area with the highest prevalence of female genital mutilation in Nigeria was a local government very close to where I was I'm from in the West State. And that's Kajala local government state. I am from Ibarapa Central in Oyo State. So um, that got my interest. First, I'd say I was very angry that at a time like this, something like this still goes on. And at this time, I didn't even know that I was a survivor or what you may say, a victim of female genital mutilation. Later on, during the course of doing the job, I ended up asking my mother after I encountered what the clitoris should look like. I asked her precisely if I was mutilated as a child. And she said, indeed, in Yoruba, she was pleading because she said, um, we're told not to do it again. And you know what she had first said was, we did it to all of you. So now I put myself in this story and I imagine how it was done on me. Traditionally, these cuttings are done by excisors, traditional excisors, which in Yoruba we call ololas, or some people call them the alabedes. Now, my people, my father's lineage produced the tools that the Ololas or the Alabedes use traditionally. So in that regard, I looked at how I was cut without paying for the cutting because it was a taboo for my family, for my lineage to pay the Ololas for the cutting. And even where the cuttings are being paid for, where mutilations are being paid for, ridiculous amount of money goes or exchange hands, you know, for doing this great danger and harm to girls and women. So you begin to look at the psychological effects of all of this on children, on women, and how we suffer for it, sometimes daily in our living. And uh, it, it, it's, it's so um, horrific 
that I couldn't be silent about it. All right. And right now, you know, I take pride in saying I am an anti-FGM advocate, which probably I make everybody understand everywhere I go um, that the clitoris is important, and not only the clitoris, that it is important and that the woman has a fundamental human right, which is her sexual and reproductive health right. All right, it, it, um, it truly is important. Um, I, want, I want you to share um, on the trauma um, that girls have to deal with after finding out that they were mutilated you know, at a very young age. What, what does that trauma feel like, having to live, of course, for the rest of your life, knowing that that was done to you when you were a kid? And how it, of course, affects um, you know, girls uh, later on in life. Absolutely. Thank you very much. In explaining this, I'd equally like to work with myths that are sold to people as to why we must mutilate the girl child. So now, uh, the, the traumas are multifaceted. We have the short-term traumas, and we have the long-term traumas. And some of these traumas are not even uh, discovered early until later in life, when you would you know, begin to do some activities as a woman. Now, the short-term traumas could range from excessive bleeding or hemorrhage to um, infections like HIV and AIDS, HPV, hepatitis, as the same tool used by one particular exciser is used on all of the girls that are being cut in the occasion that the cutting is a sort of festival. In some communities, they do, they do it as a sort of festival or a sort of um, celebration. Now, when you take that away, also in the short term, you have such effects like death, where the bleeding can just go beyond what's normal and the girl dies. Now, in, in, the, in the very long term, we have issues like uh, complications during childbirth. And this is where, you know, I find a bit fun, funny. In the documentary, um, I asked market women in Okeo. Okeo is the capital of Kajala, local government area of your state. And this woman said to me, uh, four minutes, four minutes, a woman that is not circumcised will become a prostitute. When they said it to me, they have said it in Yoruba, they are Adi or Doko. And for me, that's quite um, um, important. That word used is important. Odoko is an old Yoruba for prostitute. The modern day, we would say Ashewu. So for me, it must mean that Odoko had always been mutilation or not. The other one was the clitoris must not. It was a taboo for the clitoris to touch the head of the baby during childbirth. That's number two. Number three, they said that it was also a taboo for the clitoris to compete with the penis during sexual intercourse. That's number three. Oh. And number four, if I'm remembering correctly now, oh, what was that said again? I think I can't, I can't lay my hands on that. But you know, to, for them, this, this, this was the body of um, um, of knowledge that they have built the practice around, and this has made it impossible for them, all right, to stop mutilating. And they would say to you that it is a woman that is unmutilated that will deliver by cesarean section. Okay. How do you begin to tell them? Yes, Melanie, we're, we're running so, out of time, so I just want you to quickly address how we all can, you know, take part in raising awareness against female genital mutilation in just about a minute, please. All right, thank you very much. So um, to do that, I found that it's impossible for people to talk about or come against or stand against what they do not understand. So first, I would admonish everyone to seek understanding where female genital mutilation is concerned. And going back to uh, the, the, the documentary, Don't Cut Her, it's a great start for you to learn what you need to know about female genital mutilation. And that way, we need to understand that the WHO has said that female genital mutilation has no health benefit to the woman. I think that's instructive enough to get everyone interested in lending a voice to and okay. in the Thank so I, you. We, ho we hope that the message from the WHO and from other um, bodies will get to the very rural areas 
um, in our society. The conversation needs to continue to expand and continue to uh, uh, go all, you know, all around. You know, the need for you know, more education, the need for better primary health care facilities also. Some of all these things and all these details need to come into play to you know, eventually end female genital mutilation in our world. Uh, Melanie, thank you for your work. Um, thank you for your documentary and we hope that we can continue to speak on this and bring you back again. Yes, and thank you for your courage. Well done. All right, All right. Sure we might have lost her there, but yes, we're moving on now uh, to Plus Trending, where our in-house social media manager, Booking November, will be coming in to discuss what's trending in the world around us. Do stay with us. <laughs>